Now, will you note as we come to verse 20, here is the expectation for the future. And again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month. This is the same day, December the 24th. Now, I said this at the beginning, that the reason probably that we had two messages on December the 24th was because Haggai wanted to go home for Christmas, and he just gave two messages. Now, you know, some people took me seriously on that. I had somebody that spent a little time writing me about a 10-page letter explaining that they weren't celebrating Christmas at that time. And somebody said they ought never to celebrate Christmas. My, how I've been straightened out on it. My friend, when I don't have an answer for anything, I generally become a little facetious. And very frankly, I recognize all of that. The reason that he gave two messages on December 24th, now if you'll not let anybody else in on this, don't want this word to get out, I don't know why that we have two messages given on this particular day. But here we have them. Now we are told, and again the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month. Verse 21, speak to Zerubbabel. Now this is a message to the civil ruler, the man in the line of David. And this is a promise made to him. Note, this is important. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations, and I will overthrow the chariots, and those who ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. God will shake all nations. In other words, he's going to overthrow them, all nations. The thing they've trusted in, they did in that day, was in chariots. Today it's the atom bomb. God says, I'm going to remove all of that. Now, verse 23, In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet. Now, the signet is a mark, an identification of royal blood and royal reign. And Zerubbabel is in the line of David. For I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, the Messiah will not only come through David, he's going to come through Zerubbabel. And the interesting thing is, if you'll read the genealogy of the Lord Jesus in both the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, Gospel of Luke chapter 3, you will find that both David and Zerubbabel are in both genealogies. That's interesting. By the way, God made this promise good. And in that day, now that looks forward to the day when the Lord Jesus will come at the end of the great tribulation period. And he intends to put this line of Zerubbabel the line of David, and to be specific, the Lord Jesus Christ will put him on the throne of this universe, for he is king of kings, and he's lord of lords, and he's coming to this earth to rule. This little book puts Christ in his place as the moral ruler, the civil ruler, the king to rule over this earth someday. May I say to you, this is a very important little book, as you can see. And so that little shotgun-built temple, not very impressive in that day. It's very important because it is in the line that's leading to the coming of the Messiah when he'll come into that temple someday. Who's going to tell who's doing the great work and who's doing the small work? That Sunday school class you have may be far more important than this broadcast or any other work that's being done today for God, my friend. Only God can tell the importance of it. Let's be found faithful, and then let's work. That's what this little book says. Next time we go to a little prophecy, a little bigger than this, of Zechariah. Until then, may God richly bless you, my beloved.